الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى tells us in his glorious book in Surah Al-Falaq بعد أعوذ بال قل أعوذ برب الفلق until the end of the verse and the the surah the end of the surah ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد or seek refuge in Allah in many things and the last part that I want to focus on today is seeking refuge from Allah from the evil of an envier when they envy. Envy is a disease. It's a, you know, you have physical diseases and you have mental diseases. Physical diseases in some ways are easier because they end with death. Phys- you know, spiritual or, or the diseases of the heart, they start, the ramifications start after death and extends to until the, 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 the hereafter. So, Jealousy, envy, arrogance, hatred, these are devastating diseases. They're akin to cancer. Stage four cancer in the physical body, these are, they do the same harm, if not more. So many wars were fought over envy. You know, one country envying another, one tribe envying another, one family envying another. You know, many, many wars were fought, families were torn apart, you know, communities, you know, torn apart, all because of these diseases. So if we take al-hasad, you know, the envy, there are different stages of it. One part of hasad is, is okay, and in Arabic it's called ghibta. So Arabic is very, very concise, it does not use the same... You know, ne- you know, because hasad has a negative connotation. It's a negative word. So when you have good envy, that's called in Arabic, it's called ghibta. So this good envy is when you're, when you're competing in matters of the hereafter, or you see your brother have something and you're truly happy for him, and you, know, you ask for Allah to, to, give it, to give him more. That's what's in the heart of a, of a believer. But there are other stages, you know, when that goes bad, then you know then you get into hasad and hasad is the bad envy is when you want when you see your brother having something good happen to them you want that to re- be removed from them and come to you they had something good happen to them you don't want that to happen to them you want it to come to you and and be taken away from taken away from them that's bad envy that that's that's an evil envy now there's envy that's driven by greed, by hatred, by enmity, when you want that good thing to be removed and you don't care if it comes to you or not. You may already have it. And, and arrogant people are like that. They don't want anybody else to come up to their, to their perceived status or have things that they do have. They want to be the only one to have it. They don't want anybody else to have it. That's, that's, a, that's, a, bad, you know, that's a bad disease. And the worst type, you know, type, you know, three of the bad diseases, the worst one is when that envy and hatred motivates you into doing something bad and hurting, physically hurting somebody else. Oh, they bought a nice new car. I'm going to go and key it. I'm going to throw, you know, throw a brick at their beautiful new, new house that they, that they got. So when that envy... It's, it was in the heart, now it comes out, and it manifests itself into action. That is the worst. That's, it manifests itself into aggression. So envy is a gateway to many evils. Because when you hate somebody, now you're getting into destruction, you're getting into backbiting, you're getting into slander, you're getting into stinginess. All, it opens the door for so many other diseases and many sins. So, and, and envy consumes good deeds, just like the fire consumes wood. So it's not just that, you know, you're a bad person because, you, you know, you, you, you have envy to somebody. No, it's, it's destroying your good deeds at the same time. So you, you'd better, you know, it's a serious matter that we have to pay attention to. So Allah Ta'ala gave us a cure in the Qur'an. A true believer does not have evil envy in their heart. (coughs) This, if you have an evil envy, if you you have that type of hatred to somebody and you wish that bad things happen to them, that's that's an indication 
that there's a severe deficiency in your faith. Because a believer with a sound heart is happy when good things happen to others. He does not wish them wrong. You want what they have? Compete. Go out and work and compete and ask Allah of his bounty. Don't you know, envy them because something happened to them. You know, Allah Taala gave every single person a gift. And that gift could be, you know, you may be tall, you may be handsome, you may be muscular, you may be rich, you may be this. They're all a test. So envy in, at the heart of it, why is it bad? Because you are objecting to Allah's wisdom, to Allah's justice, to Allah's qada. What is it, if Allah wants to give somebody a nice beautiful home and give you a smaller home, that's Allah's department. That's not up to you to approve or not approve. They're all a test. You get a big thing, the test is big. You get a small thing, the test is, you know, is, is small. So it's not necessarily, if you have more, it's not necessarily a good thing. It's just the test is even more, more severe. So that, you know, envy is an objection to Allah's wisdom, justice, decree, and all of his beautiful attributes. So you should, a, a true believer should not have envy in their heart against another, another person. Allah Taala gave us the cure in the Quran in Surah Taha, chapter 20 in verse 131. بعد اللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَلَا تَمُدَّنَّ عَيْنَيْكَ إِلَى مَا مَتَّعْنَا بِهِ أَزْوَاجًا مِنْهُمْ زَهْرَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا لِنَفْتِنَهُمْ فِيهِ وَرِزْقُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى And do not extend your eyes toward that by which we have given enjoyment to some categories of them. The splendor of worldly life by which we test them. And the provision of your Lord is better and more enduring. So the, the, suge- the, the advice from Allah to avoid having this evil envy, this hasad, is first of all, don't snoop around seeking, you know, what do you have? What did you get? How much, how much are you earning? What's your salary? What, how much did this car cost? Don't snoop around, mind your own business. Do not look at the people above you because that just breeds contempt. If you don't have the sound, a sound faith, when you look at somebody who has more things than you are, you're going to hate God because you're going you're gonna to feel deprived and all kinds of other sicknesses. Don't go there. Don't look at people above you. Don't snoop at what Allah has given some because it's all a test. And busy yourself with knowledge. You know, seek knowledge. Do good deeds. Compete in that. If you busy yourself with good deeds and, and, and seeking knowledge, you're not going to have time to get into trouble. You're not going to have time to envy anybody because you're oblivious of everybody else. You're just focusing on, on yourself and, and what you're doing. And be satisfied with what Allah has given you. Because what Allah has given you is the best thing for you. Now strive and see if you can better yourself. I'm not saying you just take whatever you have and you sit and you don't do anything. No. Try to better yourself, but if after all your actions that's what Allah allowed you to have, then be content. Maybe having more, you'll get into trouble and it'll be against you. So be thankful to Allah and be satisfied of what He has given you. So... In conclusion, the evil eye is, is not a superstitious thing. It's, it's, actu- it's an actual thing that exists. The envious eye. In Sahih Bukhari, narrated Ibn Anas, the Prophet Sallallahu used to seek refuge with Allah for, uh, for Al-Hasan and al Hussein, And he used to say, your forefather, meaning Sayyidina Ibrahim, used to seek refuge with Allah for Ismail and Ishaq by reciting the following. أعوذ بكلمات الله التامة من كل شيطان وهامة ومن كل عين لامة O Allah, I seek refuge with, with your protect, protect words from every devil and from poisonous pests and from every evil, harmful, envious eye. So the Rasul used to ask, seek refuge in Allah from the evil eye of others, from people who envy, who wants to hurt you, who wants, 
wants the good things that you have to go away. That's a real thing. So you have to ask for Allah to, you know, to help you and to protect you from these people. So the devil sows enmity between people. He, just, he is just looking for a, an opening. It could be a feeling that you have and he'll just go in there and say, he got something better than you are. You know, he's better than you. You know, why don't you have... It starts putting these feelings into your heart and before you know it, you're angry at that person and you're angry at God. So don't, don't go there. Be happy for people and know that whatever was going to come to you will not go to anybody else. It will come to you because Allah Taala will give you exactly what you, what you need. So the devil sows enmity. Cain killed Abel because of envy. Qabil and Habil. He killed his own brother because of envy. The Jews in Medina rejected Muhammad وسلم, and rejected Islam because of envy. They were, they were sitting there in the Medina waiting for the prophet of end of time. The second they found out he's an Arab and not a Jew, their arrogance and their envy prevented them from, from accepting his message. So envy is, is very destructive. In Surah Yusuf, in chapter, five, uh, uh, chapter 12, verse 5, when uh, um, Sayyidina Yaqub was, was, was talking to his uh, son Yusuf, when he told him he had a vision, he said, <laughs> He replied, Oh my dear son, do not relate your vision to your brothers. Or they will devise a plot against you. Surely Satan is a sworn enemy to mankind. The envy of the, that was in the heart of Sayyidina Yusuf's brothers. They thought that Sayyidina Yaqub loved Yusuf more than he loved them. And they wanted to kill Yusuf. That envy wanted them to kill their own brother. And, and these people were not normal people. These were the children of a prophet... They had four levels of, of, of prophets above them. Ishaq and Yaqub and Sayyidina, and Sayyidina Ibrahim. So th these are not regular people. If these people were not immune to envy, who are we to think that we are immune to envy? You have to, I mean, we are all susceptible to that feeling. And you have to constantly be on guard. Guarding your heart. When something comes in and you start noticing that feeling is getting in there, squish it. That's what you have to do. You cannot let envy take hold of you. So the scholars deduced from this verse that I read from Surah Yusuf that you must not advertise any advantages that Allah gives you. You may, have, you may be gifted with wealth, with intelligence, with knowledge, any gift that Allah gives you. Don't go out and broadcast, broadcast it to others and make them feel inferior. Because that just breeds envy and enmity in their hearts. Mind your own business and, and don't, you know, don't advertise. Now the problem is in this day and age, social media made this disease so prevalent that you know, now every, you cannot even go in and eat a meal without somebody posting a picture of what they're eating. You know, here, here I am eating a $200 prime, prime rib you know, steak. Here I am on vacation on this most exclusive resort. Here's the pictures. Here's the luxurious home that I just bought where every piece of marble cost $1,000 a foot imported from Italy. Put the damn phone down and stop taking pictures and broadcasting it to others. There are many people that don't have what you have. Be thankful for what you have because for every person that's going to ask Allah to, to give you more, there are 20 more people that's going to ask God to destroy it and take it away from you. Protect what you have, what Allah given you from the evil eye of people that have weak faith. And don't advertise because you may, you may think, you know, here, you know, I just want to show you kind of what, where I am. People are going to take it as you're boasting and now I feel inferior. You have something I don't have. You know, here you are spending thousands of dollars and I'm strict and I can't even get a meal to eat. 
When they look at that picture, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to ask Allah to give you more? They're going to ask Allah to take you and take, take that stuff from you. So save yourself the envy and the evil eye of people and use privacy. Use secrecy. It's, you know, share it maybe among your parents because your parents will never envy you. Your parents will always want the best for you. There are very few people, your brothers, your brothers and sisters can have envy. Sayyidina Yusuf is, is the example. So keep it as private as possible and protect yourself from, from the evil eye of, of people.